Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. This will be pretty quick today because fortunately we don't have a lot to talk about, but there's always something to talk about. So here I am. Happy Saturday to you. This is the June 27th, 2020. Yep, we're still in 2020. We're only almost halfway through the year. That'll depress you. <laughs> it's all in how you look at it. For some, it's been horrible. You know, we're all in it together. But anyway, we're almost halfway there, so... Hang in there. After the halfway point, you know, it's all downhill from there. Hopefully not literally. All right, so uh, first off, let's take a look at the wide shot of the Atlantic Basin. Infrared satellite loop here, courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com. Lots of strong upper-level winds. You can see that here, over here as well. These winds are moving against the grain, as it were, uh, because at the lower levels, the trades are coming this way. And any tropical waves that happen to be coming along would encounter those upper level winds that we see very vividly there being stretched out. The clouds are being stretched out by those strong upper level winds. But there's also this very prevalent, almost omnipresent Saharan air layer stretched out through this area. And even this area right here, which looked like it might have a chance to kind of make history, doesn't look like it's going to do so. We'll examine that more in just a moment. And also look behind that, closer to the coast of Africa, a very robust area of thunderstorms emerging off that, again, is a sign of what's ahead. But remember, it's late June, not late August, and so typically these systems do not develop. And, and that's a good thing. We cannot have 20 hurricanes in a single year, or nobody could live near the coast. It just wouldn't be possible. Some limited convection here. Uh, tangled up over parts of Central America, thunderstorms, yeah, certainly heavy rain, and it certainly feels tropical down there, but nothing organizing and nothing showing up at the computer models. Over here in the southeastern Pacific, more activity associated with the favorable conditions that have been left in the wake of this convectively coupled Kelvin wave, this rising motion that has been coming across the Western Hemisphere. So out here in the far eastern Atlantic, a couple things to point out. You can clearly see the rotation here of this system. It has that S-shape to it overall. Low pressure in here, uh, very weak because there's a lot of dry air associated with this. One of our supporters, our crowdfunding supporters, his name is Cecil, pointed this out on our chat today that, uh, you know, basically, and I'm paraphrasing despite what I was talking about yesterday, it appears that the SAL, the Saharan air layer, is going to be too overwhelming for this system. That's a good observation from Cecil there. And he's right that uh, there's just too much dry, stable, warm air through here, limiting the amount of convection. But the vigorousness, and if that's not a word, it is now, the vigorousness of the system is remarkable. Uh, and if it was not for the dry air, this would wrap up fairly quickly and become a tropical storm as it moved off to the west-northwest, but that does not appear that it will happen. Also, look at this coming off just south of the Cabo Verde area right there, Dakar, and the western portions, Senegal and vicinity. Wow. I mean, you can clearly see that rotation right in there. You know, I mean, come on. That's amazing. And it is every year. This is nothing terribly unusual. It's a little bit we're seeing a little bit more in the way of more vigorous tropical waves this year. The overall rainfall across the Sahel of Africa is higher. <clears throat> the overall humidity values are higher. So these tropical waves are maybe a little bit more robust, but don't get me wrong, we're not seeing anything here that's just going to be like, oh, come on, man, now that. Um, it's just when you see them every year, it's, it's a reminder, kind of ringing the bell that, Hurricane season is upon us, and it's only going to take about another 30 to 45 days, and these are really going to start to become more energized as the Saharan air layer loosens its grip on the region. The vorticity signature, really helpful. There is some spin. There it is right there showing up with that system that we were thinking might have a chance to develop. Again, it doesn't look like it will. Of course, now that I've said that, it probably has a chance. Who knows? You know how that works. 
Uh, and then the rest of the Atlantic here, just free and clear of any significant impulses of energy. Again, the Saharan air layer, very dominant throughout this area, all through here. Dry, warm, stable air. But occasionally these impulses will come across and they can bring showers and thunderstorms to the uh, islands, the Lesser Antilles. I'm going to show you examples of that in just a moment. Note, too, in the Pacific, we're finally seeing some of these areas trying to break off and become more congregated themselves instead of just one long line of vorticity like you see up here in the North Atlantic as an example. You know, this is where the energy is spread out over a large area. These are examples where the energy is trying to bundle and I think we're going to continue to see activity boil up in the Eastern Pacific. But the good news, still no indications of any threats to Mexico, including the Baja, just yet. So that's great. Hopefully that will persist. Uh, we shall see. So let's take a look at the modeling here. This is the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. And we're looking at a good chunk of the North Atlantic Basin here. And let me outline what we're looking at, just so you know. There's the west coast of Africa right there. Here we have uh, Nova Scotia down to the coast of Maine, Massachusetts, the Mid-Atlantic. There's Florida around the Caribbean, Gulf, Caribbean, whatever, South America. Got it? Big sprawling area of high pressure dominating the Atlantic right there. We'll re-outline it for you. Huge area of high pressure uh, all across. And in fact, if we had a hurricane coming across right now, it would probably have a good chance to make it. There's a little bit of a weakness right here, so it's hard to say, but that's a fairly strong signal, uh, especially if it was at a low latitude. Uh, in other words, if this were to develop and if it were to become a hurricane, it's not. I'm just kind of you know speculating here or whatever, and it would stay at a low latitude. This is the kind of pattern, generally speaking, that would help it to get across a long distance, but we don't have anything developing, so no big deal, right? All right, so let's move this out into time. Over the next week or so, we see what happens with that tropical wave right down there. There it is there. This is about 48 hours out, so keep your eyes on that. It moves into, especially the southern parts of it, uh, the vicinity of the islands here, some of that energy. The bulk of the energy is up here northeast of the islands. Maybe it kind of splits there. Uh, this is 96 hours out. Finally at day five, not much going on. You see another tropical wave right there coming across and strong high pressure still sitting out over the Atlantic. And then the signals of more activity trying to get together in the southeast Pacific. All right, so I thought this was an interesting tweet. I was talking about this a little bit yesterday. I think it was with the, or maybe it was the day before, uh, with the Reynolds map. Maybe it was Thursday. So this is Michael Lowry, smart individual. I cite him often, strategic planner, FEMA, atmospheric scientist, etc. This guy knows his stuff. He knows how to make some awesome maps. And so the waters across the tropical Atlantic this June have been some of the warmest on record. And he's right. It looks like a top four event. And that does not bode well. Going, The dog agrees outside the window there. That doesn't bode well as we get into August and September. Um, here you go. We need Casey Kasem. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. Casey Kasem. Remember him from American Top 40? I can't do the voice, so I'm not even going to try. But, you know, sliding up to the number four spot this week is 2020. With the average temperature, the mean sea surface temperature, for all of you math folks, it doesn't mean mean like angry. Mean is average. The mean, the average, the median. What? Well, median's different. But uh, anyway, the mean sea surface temperature for June, 1st to the 25th, 79.43 degrees, which makes it number four. Sliding up to number four this week on the top ten warmest sea surface temperatures from this time period. Wow. Uh, and then look at the company that it's in, 2010, 05, 11. Interesting that 05 is number two, and we're not that far off of 05. And then look at 2017, 1998, 
This should get your attention. It really should because as he goes on to say, these are uh, values that are of historically active seasons. It's no guarantee, but something we like we we not but not something we like to see going into to July and August. I'm just trying to make sure you're aware with everything else going on out there. This is the science. This is real. This is not made up. It's not altered. None of that. Okay, we've got excellent technology, and there you go. You know, so, uh, wow. 0.6 degrees across that region, just the area he outlined, and on average, the whole area, you know, um, running at about 79.4, as he said, Fahrenheit, but the anomaly is 0.6 above that average. Does that make sense? So let's just go back one more time. So the average has been 79.43, making it number four. But the anomaly is 0.6 above the long-term average, if you look at it that way. So you have a, uh, an actual value, and then you have what the departure from normal is, and it's 0.6. So, hear me now, okay? Please take this season seriously. We're up against extraordinary times here with this pandemic. Make sure you have plans where you're going to stay, how you're going to get there, what you're going to do if you're dealing with somebody that's definitely has issues where this COVID-19 could be a problem for them. You need to have some extra planning in place, okay? Even without the pandemic going on, and I hate talking about it, it's a giant aggravation, but it's true. We've got to deal with it. And these kind of signals, we at least see this coming. There's no denying this science, okay? And yes, there is controversy in the COVID-19 thing, and that's all I'm going to say about that. But with this, there is no controversy. The water temperatures are warmer. We can look back and we can see patterns that lead to active hurricane seasons, and that's what this other table shows us. Those are the other years. Look at the top six. Okay, we're right in there in the mix. We're not down at number 10 or number 15. We're at number four right now. Look at the company we're in. There's no disputing that. These numbers are the real deal. All right? So, you know, not trying to scare you. I'm trying to motivate you. You know, my family, we're doing stuff to make sure we're ready. Already stocking up on water here and there. You don't have to go hoarding anything, but just please be very mindful. So I want to show you this. I forgot to cue it up. Um, Deshaun Robinson shared this with me. I appreciate that, buddy. Coming in from the Trinidad Tobago Weather Center. I'm assuming that's what the TT stands for. Would make sense, right? Amazing. This is from a tropical wave. Whoa, too loud. This is from a tropical wave. Very loud. Down in the um, Trinidad Tobago area, this is video from just a tropical wave. Some thunderstorms moving through, tropical thunderstorms. Yikes. Uh, so I want to share this with you. This is another one. Whoops, same one. Another, here it is. So this is another one down there. Uh, some video shot vertically. Try to do it horizontal if you can, folks, please, for me. Come on, I like movies, and they're shot horizontal. But nevertheless, I appreciate the, the, uh, the effort that people are going to, to document this. Very heavy rain down in the Trinidad Tobago area as a cluster of thunderstorms tropical wave energy moving through even without a hurricane you know it doesn't even take a hurricane sometimes lots and lots of energy in the tropics and those tropical waves tap into that energy you get heavy rain and those downburst winds the winds coming down out of the clouds sinking motion because of the rain cooled air creates denser colder air it falls to the surface that's called a downburst. Simple way to explain it, and that's a lot of what you saw there. So thanks for sharing, and good job, folks, sharing that. This whole connected world, it's amazing. So I appreciate it. All right, that's it. I'm done. I tried to keep it shorter than normal, uh, but also share some interesting stuff with you at the same time. Remember, I am on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. Subscribe on the YouTube channel, at Hurricane Track there. Easy to find, Hurricane T-R-A-C-K. Be sure you enable notifications, very important, so that when I go live or I post an update, you are aware. Because during the season, when we get field activity, we're going to go out in the field and set up cameras and whatnot, we stream live from our vehicle. It's basically an everywhere cam. 
a mobile cam streaming live 24 hours a day and you're going to want to know when that happens so make make sure you enable your notifications and also of course I am on Patreon lots of benefits there as little as a dollar a month support at ten dollars a month gets you keys to the kingdom as we say all of our live cameras all of our podcast stuff our live chat and more check it out the link to that is in today's description as it always is you guys have a great rest of your weekend I'll be in tomorrow with another update of course thank you for tuning in I do appreciate that I am Mark Suttoth HurricaneTrack.com I'll be back with more for you tomorrow <laughs>